We are live here at the Trib Live Studios for Blush 65, Episode 2. I'm here with Sarah Hunter for her third time yep. here at Trib Live Radio. This is my first interview, so this is my maiden voyage. This awesome. Is your, this is your third experience no here, pressure. so no pressure at all. <laughs> so, And she will be at Blush Exotic on 9th Street downtown from... Every, from, every night this week. Every um, night this week. So like uh, today through Saturday, shows approximately 11 p.m. and, and 1 a.m., but that's tentative depending on like the crowd and how busy it is and things like that. Okay, and you were here last time, here around the same time last year. Yes, I was here February last year and then June the year before. Okay, okay. And your show is a burlesque show. You want to kind of explain that to uh, the, uh, the folks mean, out there? Don't to really me, like, that? I'm not much, I'm, I'm a like the world's worst pole dancer so i don't even <laughs> I don't even really try that much um but uh yeah most of my shows like every show has a theme um it's more of like kind of a like a strip tease um but i do like kind of like i mean i'm i'm, I'm a nerd you know so like I have, okay. a, I have a steampunk show i have a breaking bad show um i did uh, a pirate show last night so it's just kind of like whatever you know, just whatever you come up with. Yeah, really. you know, I come up with an idea and it's like, oh, that'd be fun to do a show, you know. And then I, you know, find music that kind of works with that and just kind of turn it into any a- uh, superhero shows yet. Um, not yet. I was worried. I have. I had an idea for a Deadpool show, but I haven't. I've only kind of got as far as the music. I haven't got like I was going to do like X Go and Give It to You and like other stuff like that, <laughs> like from the film. But like, I haven't. I haven't put it together yet. So I'm like, not you're not going to see it this week, but maybe at right. some point in the, in the future. future. Yeah. And you haven't seen. I know you haven't seen Suicide Squad yet. I've so. not seen. You know, I heard so. really bad things about it, and you know, like movies are so expensive these days that I was just true. Like, you know, like, I want save my money for Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever do a? You said you're a big Star Wars fan. Would you ever? You know, I I for, thought I knew a couple other girls that do Star Wars shows that are really good. So I don't know if I want to try to compete with that because um, like everyone kind of does it well because every you know yeah because yeah. i mean we all you know we all watch the same films we all pay attention to what's popular yeah. at the time and so like you know um like harley quinn almost like oh my god everybody's yeah. done yeah <laughs> my actually i have a friend that does a harley quinn show so, <laughs> so yeah and you're really big into the comic-con stuff the yeah the, i go to comic-con this would be my my sixth comic-con this year in san diego um, but I've also been to, I've been to Philly Comic Con. Um, I did Knoxville Comic Con last or Tennessee, yeah, Knoxville Comic Con last year. Like, what's um, your favorite part of Comic Con? Just the. I mean, for me, my favorite part. I mean, I have a lot of uh, well, because I'm a pop culture junkie. Um, but also, like, I have uh, friends that work um, with various companies and TV, uh, like TV movie studios. Um, I last year I worked with What a Workshop, who did all the visual effects for Lord of the Rings, District Nine, Avatar, um, The Hobbit. So. Okay. Um, like for me, like the, the cool part is just like going, like visiting all my friends at their booths and seeing what they're working on right now. Like seeing like what new television shows and movies and things are coming out that like, cause the, the, a lot of times you get your first look at what's, yeah, what's going coming to be released up, like, in the, the next previews year. previews and yeah. stuff like that. Like, like I don't deal with Hall H cause that's a madhouse. I don't wait over. I don't like camp out overnight in a tent, like on the like sidewalk waiting. Or, just... Yeah. Cause we're all going to see it. It's all going to be on YouTube the same day eventually. So why bother? Do they but, have like esports? They don't have like any of those esports like video game things. There. No, that's more like like there's a yeah. there is a convention called E3 that does more E3, of that. E3, yeah, yeah. That's, um, and that's, not that's been something that's been pretty big recently. They just had mm-hmm. like an event that was had over a million people. Yeah, just watching uh, people playing video games. Like mm-hmm. I can't like you're not are you a bit video game? I was more of a PC gamer. PC. Um, I I do enjoy Bioshock very much. Um, I, a couple of friends of mine go to BlizzCon every year, but that's not. I mean, I never really got into Warcraft because I knew that would be set, like the world's biggest time sink. I just, I'd never. Yeah, I know they've had like Warcraft stuff. stuff. Like they've yeah. had Warcraft tournaments, but now it's just like, oh, it's like Call of Duty stuff. That's just like, right. just blunt. I like, I've watched, I'm not really big into like Call of Duty stuff, like Bioshock. I think mm-hmm. I've had like, I have Gears of War. I don't think I've really played it, but like, I couldn't like just sit there and just watch people play video games, just pay money to yeah. watch people play video games. No. It's just one of those things. Just, And you've been in Hustler penthouse and mm-hmm. uh taboo what's what is taboo i'm not really familiar taboo with is, uh, taboo magazine it's a kind of a, a sister magazine of hustler i believe it's own it's owned by by okay. hustler um it used to be called hustlers taboo and i think they're just calling it taboo now um but it's the the bdsm and fetish okay themed so and you, if you've been in that kind of stuff before yeah also. i was i was on the cover last year um i've been in hustler twice penthouse twice uh leg show magazine four times before they went under um, I've been in Bazaar a couple times. And what's like experience so. like that? You've been on the cover of magazines. Like, what kind of like reaction is that when you see yourself on like the front of a magazine? I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty surreal. Um, that like because 
you know, you do your photo shoot with your photographer and then they send it off into the ether and then you get paid and that's that. And then like six months later, it comes out. So it's kind of like, it's it's a lot like with movies too, because it's like you shoot it and you're caught up in the excitement and you're very like, oh my God, this just happened. And then by the time everybody else sees it, you've moved on to the next project at that point. So you're kind of like, oh yeah, that was a thing that I did. And you kind of have to be reminded of like, oh, right. Yeah, that happened. I, I did that as well. <laughs> it's kind of like those surreal. It's like, oh, there's me on uh, in front of a magazine. Yeah. I mean, like I got it. Like I have, I have a few, I brought a few copies with me to the club. So I'll be like, if anybody wants to, like if, they, if people want to like come up and take a look at it or buy, buy one or something. Get an autograph happen. copy. Maybe. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, but I have a, I got mine. I, I got one custom framed. It's in my apartment. And you're, you've been living in LA for about a year now. So yeah. how, how do you like, how you've transitioned to living in LA? You've lived all kind of all over the East Coast. I mean, I'm, I'm an army brat. So I grew up moving every few years to begin with. So um, I, I've been going out to Los Angeles for work for probably close to 10 years now just like off and on just to work with people just you know do photo shoots and you know I have a lot of friends out there and I go to a lot of events so um, it just kind of I'd been living in in Pennsylvania for a little while and I just really I wanted to get to like this you can only go so far if you're not in New York or LA Uh, I mean I know a lot of like a lot of nude models a lot of art models live in in Pennsylvania in the Midwest but if you want to be really involved in the entertainment industry you kind of have to be you got to be where the industry is Yeah. yeah Um, and also, like, I, after after last winter when it snowed, like, three, four feet and I was snowed into my apartment for five days in a row, I was like, yeah, you know, I, th- I, think, I, I think I don't want to do this again. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> snow in LA. They don't usually get snow. No, we got, like, one week of rain last week or a couple of weeks ago, and that was our winter. And that was otherwise it's been like seventy eight degrees and sunny every day. So like being in Pittsburgh, you're just kind of just like this weather's normal for you. Right? I mean, yeah, well, because I grew up in the East, like, mostly in, in DC area. So this is about what we would be experiencing down there right now for the most part. And living in LA, like, like what's like the best kind of food there? I've never been to LA myself, but I've never been past like Chicago. I mean, I live in Koreatown. So like, it's all Korean food all the time. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of really amazing sushi. Cause we're so close to the water. Um, poke is really popular right now, which is like, I saw on a, on Instagram on overheard. And there was an Instagram called overheard in LA, which is just like, you know, things that you hear people anonymously submit things that they hear walking around. And uh, mm-hmm. somebody said that um, Los An- Angelenos are so like so focused on being healthy that they found a way to turn sushi into a salad. <laughs> <laughs> so like you get rid of all the rice and it's just like salad with the fish and the seaweed and the. And you still have your Mexican cuisine and yeah. your internet. Oh, there's Me- there. oh Mexican everywhere. Yeah, because we're so close and there's so there's such a um, large Mexican population there. So it's basically just it, it's ingrown in <clears throat> yeah. like LA's eatery. Mm-hmm. And uh, you were in LA for the, you were part of the Women's March. Tell me how that yes, kind of like. I did. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of, uh, I don't want to, I don't know how, how much in politics you want to go. I know we were all talking about it in the studio a minute ago, but um, a lot of people are really unhappy with the current, the yeah. current administration, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just, it was one of those, one of those things where it's like, I need to do this. I need to be a part of this. And so like, I went. I was going to go with friends and then everybody saw squirrel and got distracted and nobody, <laughs> and they, we all went eventually we just not with each other. Um, but I ran into another friend of mine on, on city hall and we, uh, you know, stayed for a couple hours and just, it was, was there just an abundance of people. Did was it just like, I think we had a, like the last I heard, we had about 750,000 people just in Los Angeles. Um, which I think was one of the higher, one of the, one of the bigger ones. Like, cause I know they had like mo- a lot of cities around the country had, like all had each had individual marches as well as the the national one. Yeah, I know because Pit- I know Pittsburgh had one and they mm-hmm. had one like Marcus Square here. I don't know if it wasn't to the scale of LA. And yeah, anything well, we close, got, but we have a pretty big population out there to begin with. So like as a percentage of you know the city yeah. population, I mean you know it worked. So uh, let's see. with uh, the stuff that's been also been voted on in. Uh, uh, yes. California recently, Proposition 60, you were totally against- I voted against Prop 60, yeah. That was, uh, and, and a lot of my, because I don't do, I don't do hardcore adult work, but I have a lot of friends who do, most that I meet through the softcore movies I do, and also just because, you know, we all work with the same photographers, we all know each other, we all follow each other on, on Twitter and stuff. Um, but every, we, were, we were all very, everybody I know who's worked um, remotely in the adult industry, including like my dominatrix friends and everyone else, it's like, it's just, what a lot of people- I think maybe didn't know about it was that like on the, uh, as we were saying earlier, it's like on the surface, it looked like it was just about condom, like use of condoms and porn, but there was a lot of kind of hidden 
fine print and subtext and everything where basically it would incentivize private citizens to not only rat out performers that they thought might not be um like we're obeying the condom law but also um it made it was it was a lot like porn wiki leaks in that like all of our personal information our legal names our addresses our web like basically just phone numbers stalkers almost, it would yeah. cre- create a database for stalkers yeah. <laughs> um which obviously you know a lot of us like to have some kind of separation between our personal life and yeah separate our, our work you know so you know obviously we all felt very strongly about that yeah we know they're all they're always our stalker fans out there you know fans that get tattoos on their yeah people that yeah. people that you know get a, maybe a little too into like forget that you're real people and get a little too into you know that uh, that will finding out about you <laughs> that does happen because i remember there was this one porn star i saw it was on instagram some fans mm-hmm. it was uh which one was it it was uh mia khalifa mm-hmm. she had a a, ta- a fan got a tattoo on her of her leg yeah and the fan thought oh she would like this and she literally called him out say like mm-hmm. that's ugly doesn't even look like me yeah what was like what was, it, it reminds me a lot of that guy that was like obsessed with miley cyrus and got like how many miley cyrus tattoos <laughs> all over his body and then she was like wow no you're that's creepy yeah, it's Don't just do like that. it's on to an obsession like yeah it kind of it kind of gets i mean it's one i mean like i know you know a few girls who have gotten their fans have gotten tattoos of them and it's and it's you know i mean especially if it's like a really nice photo that they're proud of and the tattoo's really well done you know they're like oh hey good for you wow that's awesome that's flattering but, you know, as with, I mean, I'm sure, you know, like I know um, musicians, you know, um, athletes, everybody, you know, like everyone's going to have people that yeah. take it a little too far. Obsessive, and, that, yeah. and that's when it starts to get, like when people start showing up at your house or like um, like your post office or your grocery store or your coffee shop because they know that, that because they look at your, I guess, I don't know, look at your Instagram and figure out like what places you, you hang yeah. out and follow you. That's when it becomes borderline. Like, okay, you need to like, maybe kind of, you need to chill. I mean, we have those type of people in Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah. you're not, you're not really big into sports yourself. You said, but we, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen people that the ups working in sports here that you just see these obsessive people. It's mm-hmm. just like, kind of like I'm a fan, but it's like, I'm not to that degree. Right. Like when you start using the words, we like, oh, we made this move. We did this. It's like, uh, it's like yeah. you're a little, a little too obsessive. Mm-hmm. So what 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 do you like coming back to Pittsburgh? What do you like about uh, Blush? Um, well, I I love Blush. Blush takes really good care of me, and they're all really amazing people. I love coming here. It's one of my favorite clubs. Like, and I'm I'm not just saying that just because I'm here. It really is one of my favorite clubs to come to. Um, just because it's so, it's just very pretty and classy and clean, and it's you know it's a lot. It's just nicer than a lot of gentlemen's clubs that I that I, I some of them are more to. like a little more shady, a little yeah, more like, dirty. Yeah, like like dive bar hole in the wall where like they're you know cigarette butts and you don't. And like I found I was in a I'm not going to say which club or what state because that'll narrow it down because people like, you know, people can figure out where I've been. But I have I have literally like put my hand on a chair and touched a condom like that was like wedged in the seat cushion. I was like, oh, I did. No, <laughs> nope, no. Nope. Like we so didn't know I'm, this was this type of club. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so that's why I'm like, oh, thank God. OK, I'm going to blush. All right. That's good. <laughs> that's not, but um, but no, I, I really like Pittsburgh too. Like I try to go to the Warhol Museum every time I'm here. Um, the Na- Carnegie Natural History Museum. Um, I haven't been to the Phipps Conservatory yet, but a lot of my fans are telling me. I yeah, go. I haven't been to the Warhol. I have been <clears throat> to the Carnegie Museum yeah. for. I think I had, a, I had a report. I had to like, just walk around and uh, mm-hmm. look at the different artwork. It was a pretty cool experience. I had another one that was for the Andy Warhol, but I just went online and just looked at the. Yeah. Well, Warhol's like right down the street for you guys. It's only like yeah, it's just right. I think it's right by like a mile uh, or two. PNC Park or yeah. one of the bridges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I can literally like walk from from where I am downtown across the bridge and be like like a block away. Okay, so tell me a little about steampunk. I'm not uh, really uh, familiar with that. Um, well, I'm I'm kind of pulled away from it a little bit because I was doing it so much for so long. Um, but steampunk is essentially it's a a, a subculture of fandom and sci- sci-fi fantasy that is uh, mostly deals with victorian technology um so for example um anything weird west like um like cowboys and aliens wild wild west um west world um but also a lot of the modern sherlock holmes movies have had um okay. a lot of like more like the scientific or like a lot of like frankenstein adaptations have been very sci-fi fan and like victorian like gaslight um, so basically, just like kind of like with Wild Wild West, just like a crazy spider that just the, yeah, but like, like yeah, it's got a big mechanical spider yeah. that's shooting you know shooting did, lasers. Did you, have you seen? Wild, did you like pe- the people? Wild Wild West is not good. I I grew up. I liked the movie, but like it never has gotten good reviews. You know, it was it was a terrible movie. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I like Kenneth Branagh, so like that was one of them, and he plays the the villain, and that's so that was one of the reasons I liked it. Um, it was the the 
the shitty thing is is that there haven't been a lot of good steampunk movies. So like uh, like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is another one that people reference, which was an absolutely terrible movie. Another train, yeah, that another was a train, train wreck. wreck. That was it was ended. Sean, Sean Connery said, "Fuck, <laughs> like fuck all y'all, I'm leaving." You know, it's like he's, he did, never did another movie again because it was so bad. Um, yeah, they had high hopes for League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It just just fell flat. It was yeah, too many. I've heard they're doing a remake, but it's kind of one of those like could happen, could not, might not happen. Um, so unfortunately, there aren't a lot of really good examples of it in pop culture but it's basically i mean like the the simplest explanation is that it's victorian science fiction in, in like along the lines of like Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea or um like um a little bit of war of the worlds the time machine you know a lot of jewels very like doctor Wells. is doctor who doctor who's in that category, doctor who has, yeah. a, has some steampunk elements yeah. yeah definitely like there's a lot of crossover because of the whole like time time, travel. time lord time travel thing there's a lot of like steampunk elements in that um uh, firefly is another one that a lot of people reference. It's more futuristic, like post-apocalyptic um, version of steampunk. But yeah, there's the they have like it's kind of a western town, but also you know with other cultures and plant and like aliens and things mixed in. So I yep. do have so I have a ste- I have one of my yeah. shows is a steampunk show. I did it uh, last night. I'll probably do it again before it again. I go. Yeah. And this has been it for uh, Blush sixty five. I'm Rich Donny. Let me thank Sarah Hunter for being here. And you. you can check us out every Wednesday. We'll have another performer here. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, guys.